This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Daimler reached an agreement with U.S. regulators to settle lawsuits and investigations that it installed software in vehicles to cheat on diesel emission tests. It's going to cost the automaker nearly $3 billion. The company faced claims from the EPA, Justice Department, CARB, and the California Attorney General's Office that involved 250,000 diesel-powered Mercedes-Benz cars, vans, and trucks. More details will be released once the settlement is made official in mid-September. Daimler says the deal will impact its free cash flow over the next three years, with the largest impact in the next 12 months. And the company that was responsible for the scrutiny into diesel emissions, Volkswagen, is continuing its aggressive transition to EVs. The company announced it will expand its plant in Chattanooga, Tennessee, to build battery cells and packs, along with electric vehicles. It will also build a lab nearby to develop and test cells and packs, which it hopes to have fully operational by the spring of 2021. And speaking of manufacturing investments in the U.S., Toyota and Mazda announced that they will spend an extra $830 million at their jointly run plant in Alabama to install more advanced manufacturing technologies. That pushes the total investment at that new facility to $2.3 billion. The plant, which will employ around 4,000 workers, will have the capacity to build 150,000 units of a new Mazda crossover and 150,000 units of a Toyota SUV. The new plant is scheduled to be up and running by next year. Steve Carlisle, GM's president in North America and former Cadillac president, revealed some pricing information for the new Cadillac Lyric EV. He says it needs to be priced similar to, quote, a mid-size Lux SUV today. It won't start with a 7, and it won't start with a 6. And you know what? That seems like a good price point, under 60 grand. But we will have to wait and see what kind of features that price gets you. Engineer from anywhere. Perform tests from your office, lab, or living room. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, we have you covered. Our hardware and software is trusted all over the world. Global company headquartered in Troy, Michigan. Intrepid Control Systems. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. Time to share some more highlights from the Bronco event that I was at on Tuesday. I got to have a great conversation with recent AutoLine After Hours guest Paul Wraith, lead designer for the Bronco program. Well before a production model was ever shown, I learned that one of the first efforts to bring the Bronco back was to take it racing in the Baja 1000. But that required a ridiculously short development time. The Bronco R, which was created for the endurance race, had to be completed in just three months. So designers quickly carved out the shape they wanted from styrofoam blocks. And while it may not have taken long to make, Paul Ray said they still incorporated nods to past Broncos and even gave away some production cues. Note how the fender sides come up higher than the top of the hood. And look at the shape of the wheel wells. Both are elements taken from early model Broncos. Sticking with the hood area, while the Bronco R doesn't have the hood handles that production models feature, you can notice little indents on the hood where they belong. The grille is the inverse of a version that's available on production models, but the rectangle shape incorporates lights for nighttime racing in the Bronco R. Lastly, you've probably noticed the outside mirrors aren't mounted to the doors. They're actually mounted to a bar that stretches the entire width of the vehicle. That too was featured on the Bronco R, as was the channel that sits on the dash and allows cameras like a GoPro to be bolted right to it. So even though the production Bronco hadn't been seen by the public yet, Ford was giving away cues to unsuspecting viewers. Hyundai revealed the N-Line version of the new Elantra. This is not a full-blown performance end car, but an Elantra with sporty features added on. Under the hood is a 201 horsepower, 
1.6 liter turbo engine that can be mated to a 6-speed manual transmission or a 7-speed DCT. It features increased suspension stiffness, multi-link independent rear suspension, and larger front brake rotors. Changes to the styling include a unique grille pattern, 18-inch wheels, side skirts, integrated spoiler, chrome exhaust tips, and a rear diffuser. The interior is rocking a unique steering wheel, unique seats and gear shifter, and metal pedals. The auto industry is developing new technology at a faster pace. So to keep up with what's going on with connected, autonomous, shared, and electric technology, TU Automotive Detroit has joined forces with TU Automotive Awards, Ward's Auto Interiors Conference, and Ward's Auto UX Conference for a one-year-only virtual event. Click the link in the transcript or description box below to sign up or to learn more. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Intrepid Control Systems. Over-the-air engineering. Boost your game. And by Borg Warner. Propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy-efficient world. A number of automakers have experimented with subscription services over the last few years. Some have had success, and others have failed miserably. And recently on Autoline After Hours, we were joined by Mark Del Rosso, the CEO of Genesis North America, and he shared his thoughts on whether it's something that makes sense for his brand. Quite candidly, the, so there are a segment of customers that believe in subscription. Uh, they want to go through different vehicles at different times and have different solutions made available to them. I think this is definitely the era that a lot of companies take the lead from Genesis and really plug into what do customers want. So from whether it's subscription or ownership, et cetera, what we have to do as a, as a company, as a brand, et cetera, is to be able to offer the customer choice and flexibility. And I believe we're beautifully positioned. Being a young company, you get to try and test and learn. And I have to really credit our dealers as well. They're an enthusiast, enthusiastic bunch, that's for sure. And they really want to win in their communities within North America. So uh, I feel like it's absolutely something that if the customer demands it, we have to find out what the, figure out what the solution is. So again, anything is possible at Genesis. For more insight into Genesis, you can watch that entire show on our website or YouTube channel. We had a Kia Seltos come through the Autoline Garage, which is one of the newest models to hit the American market and just went on sale a couple of months ago. From a styling standpoint, the Kia is a head turner. To our eye, it reminds us a bit of the Volvo XC40. They both have a kick up in the rear sail panel and a blacked out roof to create that floating roof look. The front and rear end of the Seltos may be a bit busy, but the styling gives it a more upscale look than many other small CUVs. Inside it features analog gauges with white lettering on a black background, making everything crisp and easy to read. We drove a top of the line SX turbo all wheel drive model. Performance is perfectly adequate with its 195 horsepower 1.6 liter engine mated to a 7 speed DCT and it delivers 27 miles to the gallon, which is competitive in the all-wheel drive small crossover segment. But we found the Seltos to be a bit noisy at highway speeds and had to crank up the volume to hear phone calls. But it sure offers a lot of value. The Seltos we drove was loaded with every conceivable option that Kia offers, and yet the price was only $29,485, including destination charges. But that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching, and go out and have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.